Hey, hey, once again, um, I'm here with uh, the Grey Goose. Um, it's not really his real name. I just named it that because it's alcohol and I used to drink a lot. But uh, I'm changing the oil in it. Uh, if you're ever doing an oil change, make sure you put jack stands up. Uh, mine are invisible. Uh, they're really expensive uh, because they're invisible. But uh, when you get them on uh, ramps, put a jack stands up so when it falls it doesn't fall on you um, it's already on the jack stands but uh i'm gonna change the oil real quick i got i don't know if you guys know about eight years I, i've been in the oil change business i'm not a mechanic i'm a uh certified uh professional fluid specialist okay preventive maintenance fluid specialist that's the whole technical name but i uh I worked eight years, Jiffy Lube and Valvoline. Uh, started with Jiffy Lube, went to Valvoline, then worked for Tire Lube Express at Walmart for a manager, and then they switched over to Jiffy Lube for a short time. Then after that, um, no more oil change places. Uh, but I did construction, and speaking of construction, I've done construction uh, for the past, I guess, 20 years, self-employed. But uh, I'm doing this for the boat. Just right here, I'm putting two foot apart so I can put, uh, four by eight sheets of plywood up. Uh, then I'm gonna build a double, like a French door right here, uh, a double door, Dutch door, whatever you wanna call them. Um, I'm not good with words, uh, but uh, I'm better with pictures. Uh, so that's basically all I gotta do, just there's a piece right over there that I need to put up across there, but my batteries died and I ran out of screws at the same time. So I got screws today. I'm gonna finish that off, get four by eight sheets of plywood in a minute. Next time I get another check, uh, from YouTube, since YouTube's not paying much, I'm, I'm waiting to then so I don't drain all my, my money. Uh, but the boat will come, go in here instead of us uh, having to take it to storage all the time, so we can we can store it in here and leave right on out. Uh, I'll run electric to it so I can uh, charge up the, uh, both the batteries uh, and do a little work in there, maybe put some cabinets along the sides to store stuff and rod holders on the side. That light there is coming down, that's an old light taking it down, putting another light up. I would do solar lights, but there's no shade back. I mean, there's no sun back here, there's all the shade. So I'm gonna to have to run electric to that as well. So uh, probably LED lights with the cameras. So I got cameras for the house. Uh, uh, we'll put cameras up. Uh, this is just a property uh, that uh, hopefully we can own. We can buy this duplex. So uh, they're letting us stay here and just cut the grass and maintain the property and then fix stuff a little bit here, you know, paint the walls and stuff. So uh, stay here for free, just pay the bills uh, on the electric and everything and the cable because we're going to get 1,000 megabytes per second cable, I mean, internet here. So uh, not cable, but internet. So uh, that's nice of her to do that we can stay here for free until we get a place or maybe we can buy this place from her in the future. Um, but I'll be fixing up the house while I'm here to show appreciation uh, to her and uh, cutting the grass and everything. So I'm doing this for free as well. So this is like $500 to, to enclose all this because this other spot was here. I'm just gonna enclose it all, put cabinets up and electric to it. It's probably five to $700 to finish that. But hey, if she's gonna let her stay here uh, right now, um, that is very good because the other side I'm gonna probably paint one of the rooms like a neon blue because I got green in my logo So the the green screen actually you can see right through me because it takes the green out of that So I think neon neon blue is the way to go because pink like sometimes I wear like I, I'm kind of pink in the winter time, so I don't want to do neon pink in there I'll do a blue screen in there. So the whole room I can do blue uh, other than that, 
there's a uh, there's tips that I want to give you for oil change. What I do, I put a note in my phone, what, what, what vehicle and, and what size uh, wrench. Um, this one here is a 13 millimeter. My Nissan is actually, I think, a 15 millimeter. I have to look at the, uh, I have to look at my chart on my phone, but I always make sure, so when I get down there, this is all I need, and filter pliers to get the, uh, the filter off. Usually I don't have to use filter pliers because people over tighten those. You're only supposed to snug it and then turn it just a little bit to snug it in there. Uh, but when I get down there, I'll give you a little more tips, um, tips on changing your oil. It's not probably what everybody else does. Usually if I'm not talking on here, I'm already done with this oil change. It takes like five, 10 minutes tops and I'm back down. My next door neighbor, Lamar, uh, when I stayed in the other house, the one that burnt, uh, he always laughed because he see my hood up and then he turned around and the hood's back down. He's like, what are you doing, checking your oil? I said, no, changing my oil. He goes, no, you didn't. I said, yes, I did. I changed my oil faster than I eat. He said, I see. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll get down there and give you a little bit more, more uh, tips. And, and I wouldn't necessarily go exactly how I go. This is how I do it. So take it how you want to. So if your car breaks down, hey, I don't know what to tell you. Mine's been running for 205,000 miles approximately. So uh, I've done something right. Let me get down there. That's what she said. Ooh, yeah, ooh, that's what she said. Ooh, that'd be nice. Sorry, I got real excited there real quick. Okay, I have my, uh, my catch pan here for my oil. Uh, what you want to do, uh, it doesn't, shouldn't take much pressure because people over tighten, they over tighten this uh, plug as well. But watch this. Let me uh, let me get you a little better angle. Put a dangle. But you just uh, hit your hand like this, and there you go. It should be come off. You shouldn't do it too too awfully tight because you'll strip the threads in it. A lot of cars have some uh, like Hondas and Toyotas. You're supposed to change this plug every single time uh, the gasket on there, at least because the gasket crushes. They got a crush gasket. And don't worry if you do get oil a little bit here and there. Um, if it's on accident, it's on accident. I, uh, there's a little bit gonna go uh, on the ground. So yeah, uh, the EPA is gonna be out here. But if you have a bigger catch pan, it'll be nice. Uh, and there's oil leaks on this on this truck, but I use Max Life oil. Uh, Max Life came out in 2000, I think in the year 2000. Uh, that's when um, when I was working for Valvoline. So I use Max Life Max Life uh, oil because it uh, it actually um, swells the gaskets up a little bit. It has something in it that swells the gaskets up. That's what they say. But it's been working good for me since then. So this uh, this truck has always had Max Life in it since I've owned it. You're supposed to use it after 75,000 miles, I believe. I let it drain a little bit. Some people let this drain like forever. Uh, it doesn't need to. I mean, you're never gonna get all of it out. That's what she said. The filter is kind of hot, so I'll do that here. And I'm just checking. Uh, you wanna check check your car for, for leaks and stuff. Just uh, unusual extra leaks. Uh, this one already, like I said, this already has oil leak. But, uh, I'm about to plug this back up. That's what I said. And that's that. Make sure to tighten it. And it's nothing, no biggie. You don't have to go 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 ham with it. Just that's all. Nothing like crazy. Don't hang on it. Okay. There you go. Put it where the filter's at, and I'm gonna get uh I got one right here. Turn the camera. Well, it's a little hot, so I might have to wait a little bit on that. And if it's if it seizes on there a little bit, if it seizes on there a little bit because it's uh just been on there for for about three thousand miles, um, you get a screwdriver, stab it in there, and then pull it down. What? So I'm gonna get that done. Let me go get a screwdriver and um, get this taken care of. All right, go post that recording. Hey, I'm gonna show you guys uh, 
this uh, screwdriver. I got the screwdriver in there. Uh, so now I just got to twist it. So twist it without getting oil on this camera. There you go. And then take the screwdriver out. Let it drip a little bit. And I'm going to put this back up here for you guys. Hey, got, got to work with what you got, okay? So, I don't know what I did with my rag. But, turn it, let it, let it drip, let it drip in the pan. Every single bit of oil, every single little bit of oil got in the pan. Hey, you didn't see anything on the ground, did you? So, I'm going to let that drip out a little bit. And um, I'll probably talk it really loud because the microphone attached attached to the, the truck chassis here. And I'm doing all this trying not to get the GoPro uh, the GoPro uh, oily and messed up. I know it's waterproof, but I don't think it's oilproof. Hopefully, I got the oil here. I, it's one thing you got to check. Make sure you got oil in the oil filter. But this uh and you can put gloves on too guys i would put gloves on because you'll get cancer and and die tomorrow okay you will get cancer and die tomorrow if you don't wear gloves so please please wear uh some gloves so there's the oil filter what you want to really make sure this is very very important guys make sure that the black gasket is on this oil filter okay there's a black gasket on each oil filter uh there's a base plate up here you want to wipe the base plate just to make sure that there's not an oil filter, maybe a gasket from the last time, but you'll know because as soon as you start up and you got a double gasket, it's going to spray all over the place, okay? It's going to spew. Spew. Yeah, I like saying that word. But it will spew everywhere. Uh, that's what she said. So I got the black gasket on there, and uh, I don't know if you guys want to see that. There you go, black gasket as per se. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put the oil in here in a minute. I'm gonna wash my hands and then um, cut this camera off. Okay, got my screwdriver up so I don't run over it. Let me, uh, let me put that all the way up. If I don't do that now, I'll forget about it. Uh, okay, I always have a, a an old uh, clothes detergent bottle, and what I do is put bleach, water, and soap in there. And I always used it for uh, construction and everything. Uh, but hell, now's a good time for the virus season. You can still use use it. But uh, just wipe up like that. Make sure you got plenty plenty of. Uh, paper towels to wipe up with here or rags I used to have a rag uh, I think this is so funny uh, on this uh, oil filter but hold on I'm gonna tell you now this this truck takes five quarts of oil so it's going to take this whole this whole jug and I use a high mileage uh, blend um, it says 530 for this truck but I'm pretty sure guys about 200,000 miles, you're not going to want to use 530, so I use it a little thicker. It's 1030. I'll pour that in like so. And this is the funny part. Your guy's like, hey, the oil's going to fall out. The oil filter's right here. I did that I did that on purpose at uh, at Valvoline and Jiffy when customers wanting to stare at me. And, and they, want, they, they yell like, stop. I'm like, uh, what? Like, the oil filter's not on. It won't leak out until you start the truck. It's not gonna leak out from that, the filter, oil filter spot, until you start the truck. So if you start the truck, uh, then that's gonna be a problem. You're gonna have it everywhere. So the basic rule in this is not to put every single bit in there, but I'm not the average person. I'm just gonna go ahead and put five quarts because I already definitely know this will take five and possibly take five and a half. Uh, some days it's thirstier than others for some reason. Uh, and here's a trick to do with the oil cap. You put it right here where you close the hood at because if you close it and the hood don't close right, 
you know the oil cap's not on there. So take that off, let that drain a little bit in there. And you want to clean the oil cap off. And right around where you put the oil at. I will put that snug back on here and put the oil filter on. Be right back. Okay, it's on. Uh, let me start this thing up and we'll be good to go. Put all my trash up. Oh, don't worry about my battery. Yeah, I got house, uh, house wiring in here and cables for, uh, for inverters and stuff and amplifiers, but I used, I, that's what I had. It was free. Okay. It's free from the job. Uh, what you want to do is start it up. Uh, you want to check for the oil, the oil pressure, oil choke light, make sure that thing's, it goes off and, uh, under the vehicle where the filter and the plugs at. So wish me luck. First, I'm going to check the oil light. Well, the oil, this guy's an oil pressure gauge right here. Okay, now it goes up. It's about middle. It should go in the middle about 40, of about 40, 35 to 40. So that's where it needs to be. Check underneath. Make sure it ain't spewing. Okay, and right now, what I would do now is check my transmission if it was level, like back it down. So I'm gonna back it down now to get that over with. Back it off the ramps. We'll take your um, invisible uh, jack stands off, okay? There we go. Okay, and then I'm gonna check my transmission fluid after I put it in park. Check my transmission fluid here in a second. And uh, let me check it real quick. Okay, it's checked, it, the, the, the stick's there. I ain't worried about it, I just checked it, okay? Hey, I'm trying to make a quicker video. That's what I said. So I'm gonna shut it off. I'll let the uh, oil go back down to the pan a little bit. Um, just take about a minute or two just to make sure most of it's down there. And then, that's the transmission stick, this is the oil. So. There you go. And I just bought these, uh, I'm going to let that drain just a minute, but I just bought these ramps um, and I found out that I had my other metal ramps, but the other metal ramps might have been compromised a little bit because it was in the fire, so it might have warped. But I got these for like 40 or $50. They're plastic and you think they wouldn't do good, but the rhino ramps, look, look, it looked like they would just fall apart, but they work really good. They had like four and a half, four and a half to five stars. And another good thing about these, look at this. They stack like Tupperware. They stack like Tupperware. Okay, let me uh, check this oil. And there's two ranges on here. There's a cold and a hot, okay? This seems to take more oil than I thought. I thought it only took five. Okay, there we go. I thought something was wrong. I was like, I didn't see the oil. The oil's so pretty. Because I do change this oil out. But there's an oil line. As you can see it. The oil is right there in the middle of safe. So it's in the middle. You don't need to put it all the way to full. Because that's just full. This is, this is all the way low. It's safe if it's any in this range. So it's right there. Right there. So that's, that is really good. If it is down at the bottom, typically, when it says add, typically from the add to the full is one quart. That's on most cars. So if you want to, uh, unless it has a recall like Ford did in 2000, had a recall that it showed a court low all the time. So you're putting a court extra in there, but they don't do recalls unless it's life threatening. Like uh, that's my engine's life threatening um, warning there. But that's that. So that's complete. And I'm not going to carry around this, this, this jug with just a little drop in there. So I'm just going to pour the rest in that and it'll still be in the full range to get that over with. But I'll check the rest of the fluids. The radiator fluid's good. That's the radiator fluid. It's all the way up to here. Uh, it's too hot to check right now because that hose is tight. But that's your radiator. My brake fluid's over there. It's in the middle of the brake. 
uh, fold and add. Uh, transmission's good, power steering's good, so uh, the belt, you want to check this belt as well, guys. So if you want to check this belt, they say if you got three per square inch, you need to change it, but that's something that Valvoline said, I guess, to sell more belts. Uh, I wore mine out. That's what she, that's what she said. But uh, I wore mine out and I actually had the belt. I probably still have it in this uh, truck box because if that one ever broke, the brand new one ever broke, the other one lasted like 100,000 miles and didn't break, but I changed it. And I actually kept the old belt and I probably, oh, here it is. No, no, it ain't. I thought it was still, it's probably buried in there. That's what, uh, that's what she said. But I still keep a spare one. And there is something that they said you might can use. I'm not sure if guys carry pantyhose around, but if your belt ever breaks, there's some kind of method where you can maybe use pantyhose to tie it around there. I'm not sure. I, I don't know. Never tried it. Never had pantyhose, okay? Unless I robbed a bank. But those days are behind me. Hey, I can talk about it now because it's over 12 years and it's only capital murder. I didn't kill anybody while the bank got robbed. So just get over it, okay? Let's move on. Stop living in the past. Uh, okay, let me put the button this up. Wipe this sweat off with this oily rag. And there you go. Well, talk to you later, guys. And that's how you change your oil. Kind of. So take the best parts and leave the rest. That's what... She said, go pro stop recording. Hey guys, I have hoodies in. The name brand are independent, so you know they are thick and high quality. I'm having them all the way from small to 3X, uh, only in black right now. So just go ahead and look in the descriptions for that. Uh, I do have uh, t shirts as well. The name brand of the t shirts are canvas, uh, they are thick, they are soft. The logo wipes off like a bib, just like on the hoodie. So if you want those, please check in descriptions. Uh, they all are pre-washed material, so they won't shrink on you. So check in descriptions for the price and the uh, shipping and handling of that, because I do ship in U.S. and in Canada. If you haven't already, um, hit follow on The Garbage Disposal on Facebook and follow me there to get more pictures and stuff. Uh, please subscribe to my page. Hit the notification bell to get notified of upcoming videos. And hit the like button if you like it. Other than that, please share it with your friends, family, and even your boss. Have a great day, unless you made other plans.